like um, crude oil, copper, iron ore, uh, what has transpired for them by way of prices in 2016 and what lies ahead. We are joined by Peter Maguire, CEO of Australia, XM.com. He's joining us on the phone line from Sydney. Peter, thanks so much for being with us at NDTV Profit. Now, 2016 started on a very sour note for many of uh, the global commodities, uh, especially base metals and even crude. Crude slumped a big, uh, was sub $30 a barrel. Now, what's uh, uh, lined up for, for uh, uh, metals and crude prices uh, go, uh, going ahead in 2017. Let's start with crude. What are your targets for crude? Well, good morning. Thanks for inviting me on the show. I think we've, as you've quite eloquently pointed out, we've seen a 100% move to the upside since February. Uh, we're now sitting at that $51 to $53 a level. And I feel as though that there's probably further upside. I wouldn't be surprised over the next couple of months. We've got an inauguration with President Trump elect. And then, of course, we've got those cuts coming through from OPEC and non-OPEC producers. So I think it'll edge up higher from here. Though I think you'll see a handbrake if it goes anywhere near 60. And uh, you'd have to see geopolitical concerns to really see much higher because there's an oversupply of crude in the world at the moment. And that seems to be the positioning due to that OPEC and non-OPEC meetings in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but um, for the next year, how, what could be the crude uh, range on the higher side and the lower side? Because there is a belief uh, that should crude oil steadily stay above $65 a barrel, U.S. shale gas production will kick in and that will cap the upside. Well, exactly right. So, so we've got, as the shale producers, and that's interesting to note, that they've been able to cut costs over the last 18 months because we've seen so many of those rigs being um, made vacant and, you know, the guys just walk off them quite simply when crude prices are too low. And so that's price elasticity. And as the price comes back up, so too do the workers. They leave a, a, an existing construction job, say, and come back to the rigs. So what's evident is that I think that you're going to see if crude prices go up to that 55 to 60, you're going to see a, a larger amount of rigs come back onto supply and that's going to, I think, cause, again, another problem from, for the OPEC and non-OPEC producers where you've got this increased capacity coming through from the shale revolution. All right. Uh, so uh, what is the range that you're working with for crude? Well, I think, if, I think if you've got to say 55 to the upside, maybe, maybe 60 if you see some geopolitical concerns. And I think to the downside, you'd have to be still looking at you know, maybe that $45. The hedge funds can jump in quickly and can really do a quick reversal and drive the markets lower. So you probably have to look at 45 to, say, 55 to 60. That would be your price points. Right. Now, when it comes to coking coal and iron ore, a big, big year uh, in 2016, you know, coking coal prices uh, increased four times around, and even iron ore saw a huge rally coming through. Do you think it's overdone? Is it going to be uh, some correction and range bound moves in 2017? Yes, I do think it's probably over there. If I start off with iron ore, we've got that large mine coming online within the next month out of um, Favale. And that's certainly, I, I think, going to impact supply. The second part is, of course, that the coke and coal prices, they were massively ramped up. They were, there was a shortage in the market going back to, you put your mind back to 14 and 15, we saw that huge, the price was oversold and it became incredibly cheap. And then, naturally, the Chinese and other nations were able to buy at really depressed levels and they've driven it higher. So it's been, one, it's been a good commodity to trade, but more importantly, it's been great for the producers. And I feel as though to some extent it's probably overdone to the upside and you'll see some form of correction probably for both of those metals leading into 17. So Peter, what if uh, the $1 billion infrastructure spending does come about in the US? Wouldn't there be greater demand for steel and hence um, greater demand for cooking coal and I don't know? Uh, is there a bottom here? Uh, I mean, uh, is there a lower floor uh, in prices for both these commodities? Well, I think first off, I do, I do believe that you're going to see an increase as far as demand from the, the Trump administration and the infrastructure spend from all the way across, from bridges to airports to, to highways, you name it, they'll be spending money and, and certainly there'll be a, a huge demand or iron ore and, of course, coke and coals from the steel side. But there's still large quantities of this um, in, in, as far as China's concerned. I think it probably it will work itself through the market. In the first couple of months, we could see a bit of a price correction to the downside. But I think overall, 
the increase as far as demand is only going to probably hold prices. They might dip, you know, 15, 25 percent. Um, but moving into six to, to 17 and 18, we've just got to see how effective the new administration in the US is prepared to push to make things happen. And that's where everyone's sitting at the moment. Easy for Mr. Trump to say something will happen. Let's just, you know, he's got to produce now um, or he'll be fired, as they say. How much of a risk is China? Because, um, you know, some people are expecting growth to be around 6.5%. What if they increase production of uh, coal and I don't know? Well, I, everyone's had a mixed view over China in the last 18 months to two years. We were worried about it at the end of last year, start of this year. Everyone thought that you know the, the, the sky was going to fall in. And then all of a sudden it, um, it's come back to the party. The government certainly is uh, front and centre as far as you know, assisting, the, as far as infrastructure. And uh, they're maintaining their uh, agenda as China has for many decades. So in turn, I think that, you know, the Chinese demand picture, possibly you could see, you know, oversupply as far as housing, but with a population base of, you know, similar to India, um, there's a lot of people and they all want pots and pans and dishwashers and um, an apartment to live in and a motor car or a motorbike. And as they come up the consumption curve, there's certainly more demand. So I think fundamentally um, the China position or the China picture is not going to really impact too much to the global market moving forward. You might see a few hiccups, but I think the government are prepared to do whatever's needed to make sure that, uh, that you know, the wheels don't fall off. Right. Peter, what about gold? Gold this year has become fool's gold. Where is it headed? Yeah. Well, you know, gold, I, I was just, it was probably a glory trade. This time last year, if you put your mind back to the first six months of 2016, it had the best return for those six months since 1979. Now, it was monstrous. And so everyone got into the picture, oh, gold's going to gallop ahead. We've got to put our mind back a little bit. What happened last year as far as this year, 2016, with the value of the US dollar? We've seen interest rate rises. We've seen all the talk going on as far as what Yellen's prepared to do, Stanley Fisher, and so on and so on. So uh, since the Trump inauguration, gold is well off the most highs that we experienced, probably down about $160, $170. Now, where it goes from here, I think there was probably oversold um, to the downside where it currently is. Let's see if it bounces. A contrarian would probably think they should be holding some gold for due to uncertainty, and it's probably cheap buying at these sort of dollar levels. So I think that gold possibly will probably trend higher from this sort of baseline and in 17, keep your eye on the US dollar, keep your eye on what the government's prepared to do in the US and emerging markets. So um, if you don't have too many geopolitical concerns across Europe, I think gold has probably got another, yeah, probably go up maybe 15, 20% from here. Those sort of numbers conservatively. All right, Peter, thank you so much for speaking with us at NGTV Profit, giving us your views on where metal prices and even crude prices.